Hey there, Nick Junitakis here. In this video, we're going to go over how to find answers reliably. This could be finding a solution to a very specific programming problem, or maybe you're trying to learn something new, so you're doing a whole bunch of different research. Now, I'm not saying the methodologies that we're about to go in this video are the best things ever, but this is something I do a lot in my day-to-day. -day. I'm a software developer, right? Just like you. Uh, I am Googling a lot, doing a lot of research. Technically, part of my job role is to do R&D, research and development. So I'm often looking for ways on how to compare and find information about technologies very quickly, do extensive writing ups about them, experiment with them, demo them out, and then ultimately implement that into a final solution that is used in production based on best practices. And, you know, the goal there is to go, you know, how do I know nothing about this thing to being able to pull it off? And uh, yeah, this is a blog post that I wrote out. And by the way, it will be hosted on my blog at nickjoinattackus.com. I'll leave a link to that one in the description. Right now, I'm just hosting it on localhost because I'm making this video before the blog post is actually published. But by the time you watch this, it will be available. So, you know, the TLDR, right? Uh, these are basically all the different tools that are used to do various forms of research, typically in this order as well. And this recently came up because someone emailed me about a week or two ago asking me, how do I read man pages or Vim's documentation, like their specific help menu, like more efficiently? And well, the answer there is I kind of don't like I will look at man pages, but usually it's a, as a supplement to answers I found somewhere else. And yeah, let's just get into it here for this blog post. I'm not going to narrate this like an audio book, but I'm going to use this as a guide because, you know, something like this, it was just a lot nicer to, to write out. I've done a couple of videos like this in the past, and they seem to be pretty well received based on number of comments and upvotes, etc. But here we go, right? So if I'm trying to research, wow, already finding typos here, I will fix that one, uh, something or solve a specific problem, you know, I typically reach for the same resources with different search terms. So in my opinion, right, like researching, it is a wildly useful skill. Being able to just describe your problem in a way that lets you find answers is uh, incredibly valuable, right? Uh, it's something that applies to many different situations too, right? As a software developer, uh, you could be just looking for a very, very, very specific solution to a problem, like, you know, how do I make a database index using whatever or that I'm using or something like that, but it's not just for software development too, right? You could be maybe trying to fix your dryer and now you need to research like what is a heating element and like which one do you need to order? Like these are just like completely random things, but they come up in your day-to-day -day potentially. So these are, you know, all valuable skills to have just researching in general. And um, yeah, I'm mainly writing this post, right? Because someone reached out to me with an email and asked me just how to understand this stuff better. And yeah, I go on to say here around things like man pages and Vim's help menu, kind of use uh, other resources first and kind of just use those as supplements to get, you know, really good tips on how to improve something like after I already know the basics about it. But yeah, when I'm doing some researching, this stuff really happens in a very specific order. And for me, at the very least, it starts with uh, using Google and YouTube, right? If you're not a fan of Google and you're using DuckDuckGo or something else or something else, then uh, feel free to use that as a replacement. But for nearly every one of problem that I have, it starts with searching these two sources. This could be any thing like, you know, how do I recursively count lines in uh, a file on Linux to whatever programming uh, related things I'm stuck on or want to learn more about. Now, for common things like, you know, how do I, I'm basically looking for like, what command do I run to do that? Then I'm hoping to find an answer on Stack Overflow, which is a little bit of context and reasoning about why that's a good solution. But for not so common things, or maybe a little bit more vague or larger problems, I'm really hoping to find a blog post written by someone who just has a ton of practical experience doing it. And they just lay out uh, basically as much information as possible, right? You can never be, uh, I don't know, too skimpy with that sort of thing, right? If there's like, uh, their entire thought process, like how they led to that solution. That's exactly the type of stuff that I want to see as long as well as uh, many just like use case examples, right? Maybe like five different ways to apply that thing in very similar use cases that will give me a better understanding on how to actually use it to uh, apply it to my specific use case. In this case also like, you know, video is really, really helpful if it is demonstrating something, right? Like I don't know. I like blog posts, right? I have over 400 of them, but I also like video too. I have hundreds of them as well. Like, I don't know, like just seeing something work, it just gives like, I don't know, uh, some amount of confidence that like, okay, I'm watching this thing actually working for someone else. It's probably going to work for me, you know, unless it's like a really old video where something gets updated and something really changes. But, you know, generally speaking, seeing it work on video, I don't know, it's just really nice. It's also like extremely useful for non-programming things too, like maybe how to build something or cooking or whatever. Just seeing those things happen step by step, like seeing, seeing someone actually do it, very, very helpful. At least for me, like I tend to learn much better from video than just like written words, but 
yeah, I don't know. It really depends on the topic. So I don't mind like reading just documentation and whatever. But now uh, for search results, right? Don't be afraid to go past page one. Sometimes I'll keep going and I'll find like really good nuggets of wisdom from blog posts that are like all the way on page like 11, like that actually happens. Um, also, if I'm coming up empty or I'm really doing like a deep dive on a certain thing, I'll actually use like an alternative search engine. So whatever I happen to use Google, right? But I will use DuckDuckGo just to like see a sample of like what's happening on other search engines, just in case Google is hiding things for whatever crazy reasons. And then uh, after Googling, typically then I'll just go to documentation. You know, oftentimes Google results will link to documentation, so it really depends. But, you know, web-based documentation here is preferred. Certain programming languages and web frameworks have really, really great documentation like Flask and Rails. You know, they make it, you know, reasonably well to find solutions to very specific components of the framework. For example, uh, with Rails, like if I wanted to learn a little bit more about the Rails router, their documentation is amazing. It, you know, kind of feels like a blog post written by the community. So this link here, I know, let me zoom in a little bit here. You know, it has chapters and like really good headings, like exactly like what I want to learn here. The million use cases, million examples, really, really well thought out. It's like super glanceable. Uh, excellent example of just a web framework having really, really, really good documentation. Now, there's documentation that's great or not so great for other tools. Now, in Kubernetes case, in my opinion, their docs are amazing. Um, but documentation for tools applies here too, right? It's not just like programming languages or something like that. Uh, it can be really great as a learning for learning something specific in isolation, which means it can double as helping you solve a specific problem. For example, if you're Googling for, you know, like you know, what's the syntax or what, you know, properties are available for Kubernetes deployments or something like that, like that, you're actually looking for something very specific, right? Something about like Kubernetes deployments. So documentation there, really nice because chances are, if you Google around for that, you will find Kubernetes documentation for deployments with a list of all the properties there that you can set with a really good explanation of like what they do, a couple of examples, etc. Now, not all documentation ranks well in Google and lots of documentation you know, let's face it, they don't have great search functionality, so you may need to poke around the docs manually, you know, kind of clicking around categories and maybe table of contents and stuff like that. It's not too bad if you have an idea of what you're doing, but, you know, just buyer beware in that case, even though technically it's free. Yeah, uh, although I will say, I didn't write it here, but like Tailwind's documentation, really nice, right? They're using what is the Algolio service to do like full text search across all of their, all of their docs, really nice. And then yeah, I just double down here and, and just say things about man pages. Like I kind of use them just as like supplementary sources to information that I found in other spots. Uh, they can be also very high quality uh, sources of info because usually it's coming straight from the creators of the tool or the maintainers at least, right? So it's, you know, you, you can trust that that information is likely going to be very good. Then after that, there is GitHub issues. So they typically rank well in Google as do those like really annoying fake sites. I'm not gonna even link them or mention them, but I'm sure you've seen them many, many, many times. But uh, I have found in a lot of cases though, going through GitHub's like opened and closed issues and pull requests, yeah, there's just like really, really high quality information lurking in there that I just couldn't find when Googling for whatever reason. So this is usually the case when you have like a very specific problem with a tool and there just happens to be like a ton of blog posts around that tool, but not to your specific problem. I don't know, I'm trying to think of a good example. I remember I was working with Helm, like I couldn't figure out a combination of like values file or, or I couldn't figure out a combination of what settings I needed to set in a custom values file for getting something like the Nginx in ingress controller working with kind, I found an answer right from like one of the maintainers in a comment in a in um, a closed issue from like a year and a half ago, and it just worked. And that information had absolutely no visibility when Googling. Um, yeah, seriously, like when I've lost all hope of finding information from the two above sources, just finding stuff here is really good. Uh, also, what's cool about looking through pull requests is, yeah, sometimes depending on who makes the PR, yeah, you can just find a lot of context, like, you know, exactly why the PR is created. I don't know, it just like really helps to put the pieces together on trying to find something here. And yeah, this is also another place for just high quality information because usually it's the maintainers of the tools that are answering, uh, at least in the issues and maybe commenting on PRs and stuff like that. Then after that, you know, we have forums, mailing lists and GitHub discussions. Certain communities, right, they have official forums and, or mailing lists. These can be pretty good, especially if you're looking for general advice where multiple folks can give their opinions on your question or use case, right? If you ever try to ask like, you know, kind of uh, an advice style question on Stack Overflow, like 17,000 people are going to come at you, lock it immediately and try to get you canceled from like real life. Um, yeah. But forums, awesome spot for just like open-ended questions where, you know, maybe there's like 
10 good answers to that, right? You can hopefully get some uh, good feedback from a whole bunch of people there. And uh, yeah, you can sometimes find specific answers to questions too. For example, um, I am a big fan of using Hotwire. Hotwire is basically, uh, well, let's save that for another video, but it's really uh, a back-end agnostic way to send HTML over the wire. So if you go to hotwire.dev, you can learn more about that. But it's really nice for building, you know, SPA-like applications without actually needing to use something like React or a dedicated front-end library. But anyways, like they have their private uh, discourse forum here. It's not super high traffic, you know, a couple posts a day, whatever. Uh, oftentimes you'll find answers to Hotwire things from blog posts and videos and Stack Overflow and other places, but it is here and I have found answers to very specific problems using that form. And that's just one example of many different cases here, right? I just happened to have that in the forefront of my mind because that was like the most recent thing. But yeah, I also go to say here, you can find a lot of things under Stack Overflow or whatever Googling results, right? So forums can be a little bit hit or miss. And then also more recently, there's GitHub discussions, right? These, uh, it's an optional thing that you can enable as a repo owner, but it's basically a forum, but it's scoped down to a very specific repo. It's all hosted on GitHub. You can find some good stuff there as well. I'm sure that's gonna be more popular over time because this feature here is uh, fairly new, right? Relative to things like discourse forum or a mailing list that's been around for you know 20 years or something like that, even more. So. Yeah, these can be all great sources for excellent information or supplemental information to blog posts and videos. Again, you know, your job as a researcher, typically you have to be almost like a detective. You know, you're kind of putting together pieces from many different sources and sometimes like like three sentences from a forum post could be like just that little piece of the puzzle that makes everything make sense. And then after that, you know, there is a good old source code, right? Diving into the thick of it as a, for me at least, kind of a last resort. I know some folks maybe will jump here sooner, but um, this is also kind of where picking up surface level knowledge of multiple languages can be really useful. For example, you know, I don't program with Go in my day to day, but I have had to look at Go source code multiple times in the past. One example recently, sorta, is I was working with Argo CD notifications and their documentation, it had some gaps that, you know, they're currently in not a weird spot, but like this notifications functionality was a third party library, but now it's built into Argo CD. Maybe I'll do videos about that in the future. Don't want to get too side topic on that one. But long story short, you know, I just couldn't find any answers anywhere, not issues or whatever. So I ended up looking at the source code and I was able to find what I wanted there. Um, this is also a lot easier nowadays with GitHub supporting be, being able to hit the period within a repo, and then you can actually just uh, see all the source code in your browser right then and there through VS Code, even supports doing things like Control P. So in case you haven't seen that, I don't know if I go to, um, let's see, I'm gonna have to start blurring stuff now. But yeah, let's go to, I don't know, Argo CD GitHub, right, since we were just talking about that one. You know, if I go here, all I have to do is hit uh, the period on my keyboard, the dot. I'm pretty sure you might need to be logged into GitHub to be able to do this. But yeah, this will actually just open, open up uh, VS code in your browser. And now you can just, you know, start looking at files just as if you were using this locally. Now I don't use VS code personally, but yeah, this is a really nice setup here. So much better than searching through GitHub's like actual search feature. And, you know, you can control P here and look for, uh, I don't know, like whatever, you know, files that you want to open, you can go to search here, do search, uh, results. It's, it's, it's really good. So, you know, in the past searching through source code could have been annoying because it means, maybe cloning down the repo and then getting it all set up into your editor and then deleting it afterwards after you find your answer. But now it's like, boom, you just hit dot and go, that's it. And then, uh, yeah, after that, there is chat or more specifically, something like Slack, Discord, and IRC. For me, this is usually a last resort move here if I can't find an answer anywhere else. Um, I've had really good conversations in chat, but I kind of reserve that as a last ditch effort. Not because it's bad, but you know, I try to be respectful respectful of people's time, right? I don't want to become that guy who asks a million questions that you could have just found by Googling and finding an answer in like two minutes, right? Um, if I do ask a question in chat, it's likely I'm kind of just looking for a specific advice or maybe it's a non-common use case that I just really couldn't find anywhere else. And, you know, if there is a gap in a project's documentation, oftentimes when I find an answer to that, I will go and make a blog post and also make a PR in the docs after I get and fully understand the answer better myself, right? This way, the next person who comes along, then maybe they'll be able to find that answer when Googling without having to make another chat request. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to say, like, that feels like the least I can do, right? Especially if someone's going to take 10, 15 minutes to explain something in detail uh, that solves a very specific problem that I had there. With that said, you know, don't let me talk you out of using chat less, right? These are communities run by folks with a common interest. It's where we go to talk shop with others, which shouldn't always be seen as a transaction of time with a giver and receiver, right? Oftentimes, you'll just be in a chat room talking about other people or talking about with other people, uh, 
just about a common topic that we all like. So it's actually pretty fun. And also, for me at least, I don't want to, you know, I wouldn't classify classify myself as like a teacher, right? But like writing a blog post or making a video or just sharing information with others, it makes me um, better at what I do. Like it forces me to learn things in a way that maybe I wouldn't if I wasn't doing that. So basically, you know, if someone asks a question in chat, I'm really happy, happy to answer that you know, I'm not expecting like, you know, compensation or something like that because the compensation is like just me getting to demonstrate or not like showing off, but like understanding to myself that, hey, I actually know how to answer that question. And maybe they ask a question in a certain way that I never thought about before. And that makes me expand on what I know. Like, yeah, it's really good stuff. Chat's amazing for that. And then also there are uh, courses and books here. Now, I typically, you know, I'm not going to go and like just buy an entire course or book to solve one very specific problem. Like if I wanted to, I don't know, learn how to submit a form in Flask or something, like I'm probably not going to buy an entire course. Um, it's kind of weird to say that stuff, right? Because it's like, I literally have courses about Flask and Docker and all sorts of other stuff. But I don't know, I, I guess before we get there, um, yeah, courses and books, really good if you want to learn something, in my opinion, larger, right? Maybe an entire web framework or an entire technology, but not for a little sliver of information. Um, also, usually I don't even start off with books or courses. I'll learn everything in isolation using a form of question-driven development. Uh, that's a blog post that I wrote, I don't know, a couple years back here. I actually killed my local Jekyll server, so that's not going to load, but I'll leave a link to that one in the description. It's just a blog post around yeah, a way to learn something new without the guidance of maybe a course in a book because maybe the thing you're learning doesn't have that. And yeah, basically I like to form my own opinions based on experience building something real. And then I'll go back and purchase courses and books to help fill in the gaps and pick up best practices, right? The goal there, it's to pick up a whole bunch of nuggets of wisdom and, and hopefully have a bunch of spots where I can go back and refactor what I've done. Now, by this point, since I've done all this other stuff on my own, like researching and figuring out stuff, uh, this actually doesn't take a long time to do that refactor. And I don't know, in a weird way, I don't even know if it's that weird. It's like a very enjoyable experience. It's almost like a reward after putting in the hard work to get there. It's like, oh, now there's like a whole bunch of different, like really good best practices. And you just go back and you're like, oh, that's so cool. And I learned this and then you can go back and do it. Yeah, really nice. And then, yeah, like I do have uh, hundreds of blog posts as well, if you want to check them out. So yeah, I'm just not trying to be like, buy my courses, right? And uh, yeah, that's basically it for the post here. Of course, I haven't uploaded it or even created the video yet, so it's not on YouTube. But by the time that you see this blog post, all the stuff will be here with some timestamps as well. But yeah, uh, I think that is about it. That's basically what I do to research or try to find a problem about really anything, right? This specific order here, Google, YouTube, blah, 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 blah. Uh, if you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments below. Also, let us know what your tactics are to research some uh, new things that you're trying to learn or solve very specific problems. I'm always interested in learning th new things about that. So maybe there's some resources here that I didn't talk about that would be new or, you know, maybe a different order. Yeah, let us know in the comments below. That will be really good stuff. On that note, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.